civilization. Okay, so yeah, so studies pro project, the Andes Valley civilization, the Andes Va Valley civilization was a culture and political entity which flourished in the northern region of, in of the Indian River called Andes River, around which more than 1,000 settlement were discovered by archaeologists. Archaeologists. Yes, the Art. discovered rains show who grave the Andes civilization was. It's compared now with the civilization of Egypt. Mesopotamia and China, the discovery of Harappa was the first induction that such a great civilization existed in India. Okay. Archaeological. Archaeological as uh, excavation continued to be done and more discoveries were accomplished and also more and more secret were known to many people. All right. So from this, Salman, what can you induct to infer about the Indus Valley civilization? What do you understand about them? They, they was a great civilization. Yes, they were, they were, they were the very river. They what? They were living in the Indian River. Yeah, in the Indus River, yes. What else? <laughs> Okay, uh, apart from this, let's just, if you went here, for example, and you go to, let's see, maps, and we went directly to the maps, So, here in this area, that is the subcontinent of India. First of all, Salman, why do we call it a subcontinent? What teacher, sorry? Why do we call it a subcontinent of the civilization and the Andes Valley civilization? We call it a subcontinent of India. Why do we call it a subcontinent? Because they was near. Okay. For example, this is the continent of Africa. That yeah. is North America, South America. You have Europe. You have here Asia. Okay. You have Australia down there. Australia. Okay. So yeah. this civilization which arose here in this place, we call it a subcontinent. Why do we call it like this? Teacher, I don't know what means subcontinent. Okay, that is a continent, okay, like Africa. That's a subcontinent, means a small continent. So, no. why do we call this civilization a subcontinent? If you can see here, okay, that's India in this place. Yeah. Okay. We took a screenshot, for example, like this, and I went to paint. And let's just do this. Okay, so here in this place, you have that is, okay. Screen grid. Okay, in this place, that's yeah. where the Indo civilization arose. Right? Yeah. If you can see from this, that's India. And that's India is in Asia, right? And yeah. The rest of uh, Asia. But here, India alone is just like it's totally separate from the land in India. Just out into the they connect surrounded by water from three sides. And the last side we have here the sea alliance. Totally separate from the rest of the continent. That's why we call it 
Oh, so, yeah, and it was yeah. near from India. It's India. We are speaking about India. Yeah. India, the whole land of it is totally apart, separate from the rest of the continent Asia. That's why we call it a subcontinent, as if it is a totally separate continent. Here you have the Arabian Sea, which was the Persian Sea back in the history. You have here the Indian Ocean. Here you have uh, the Himalaya Mountains. So everywhere it is totally separate from the rest of the continents. Here you have mountains, so you cannot go out easily to the other places in the same continent, which is Asia. Here you have an ocean. Here you have uh, the Persian Gulf. So everywhere it's totally apart from the other continent. That's why we called it the sub content. Yes. Okay, Salman? Yes. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation, Salman. Thank you, teacher. You are very welcome. Who else did not present? Thank you, Ali and thank you. Yes, yes, Michal? yes I sent the project. Did you see it? Okay, Michal, we will check it. Ali, are you going to share your screen or shall I share mine? No, can you share your screen, please? Okay. Ali? In Arabic, I think. All right, the Indus Valley civilization. Enable editing. On the on page, great. Okay. Yeah. Start. Okay. The Indus, the Indus River, the Indus River traces its source in in Tibet, at the meeting point of River Sen Senji and the Gar River. The rivers are responsible for draining the mountain ranges of Naganlong and Candes, the Shayok, Gligit, Shekhar streams, and the Ka the Kabul River all join the Indus as it flows to the sea. The Indus completes its journey with a large delta east of Kiriachi. The Indus is the largest river which is only flows through a country without having its source located in the same territorial boundaries. The river, the river plays important role in providing water for agriculture, especially in the bread basket of Punjab and Sindhi. The water, the water from the river is cro crucial for food production because rainfall is unreliable, especially in the lower parts of the Indus Valley. The Indus has also seen the, the construction of one of the most complicated irrig irrigation system in the world, covering large areas of Pakistan. Cost construction of dams has also helped in production of electricity that plays an important role in powering Pakistan's industries and towns. All right, so in your presentation, Ali, you were speaking mainly about the Indus River and how the river made yeah. the source for the civilization in yeah. India. And also you were comparing about the river in uh, the beginning of the civilization and also nowadays how they use it. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. So guys, if you went here into the Indus River, okay, in nowadays Pakistan, you will see some photos about it. Okay, these are photos of uh, the river. Of course, as you all know, the river is always used to provide clean and steady water for agriculture. And because of this agriculture process, we will have uh, the settling down, the villages. After the village, you will have city-states. From the city-states, we can start uh, a whole new civilization. All of these are photos of uh, the Indus River. Okay, thank you very much, Ali. You're welcome, teacher. Let's check here. Nine, two. All right, I believe there was one who did not present yet. Let's see. Ali. Who else did not present? Salman al Humayda. Where is Salman al Humaydan?
سلمان الحميدان اوكي سلمان مشعل الحناكي you send it yesterday اوكي let's check another screen chat <laughs> guy for the million time the only reason for making a project for providing a presentation for making anything that your teachers ask you to do is just for you to read and consume the information understand it and then try to present it in your own way even if you just copy and paste it's not about copying and pasting it's about that you understand okay Michal, this is not to be a project i'm so sorry the project must be well written and well consumed and well presented All right, grade nine. Anyone else did not provide the present uh, the project? Okay. So today we were speaking about uh, the ancient uh, the ancient civilization that arose in Mesopotamia. Okay. So we were speaking about the Mesopotamian civilization that arose in this place here between uh, two rivers, which are the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. And because it uh, arose around those two rivers in the middle, we call them the Mesopotamian civilization. Why did we call it a Mesopotamian? Because it arose around the two rivers. And also some other civilization arose in this area in that place right here which is called the fertile crescent the area between the persian gulf and the mediterranean sea this area was called the fertile crescent because it had a steady stream of water that provided a steady agriculture for the people who inhabited this place so we spoke yesterday about sumer and the sumerian civilization so let's continue speaking about uh, the Mesopotamian civilization. What other empires uh, arose or emerged in Mesopotamia? Okay, Ali, can you read, please? Ali, still with us? Yeah, yeah, teacher, did you call me? Yes, can you read? Okay, okay. Invasion and conquest were prominent features in the history of the of the ancient Middle East. Again and again, nomad, nomadic peoples or amb, ambitious warriors descended uh, descended on descended. descended means came down descended. Okay, okay. Descended on the uh, rich cities of the fertile city. Fertile crescent. Fertile crescent. Fertile crescent is the area while the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea. Okay, while many invaders simply looted and burned, some stayed to rule. Some stayed to rule. Powerful le leaders created large, well organized empires, bringing peace and prosperity for a time to the region. Over several thousand years, these empires made advances. In government, technology, and learning that influenced later civilizations from Greece and Rome to India and beyond. All right. 
So simply, we are speaking about other civilization that started to evolve in the fertile crescent and also Mesopotamia. So we spoke first about how the first civilization arose here in this place, passed for nowadays, and nowadays Iraq also. It's what it was called the Sumerian civilization that arose in the city Sumer. But later on, all of this area, okay, let's have a screenshot. All of this area here, starting from the Persian Gulf into the Mediterranean Sea, all of this area here was named as the Fertile Crescent. Fertile Crescent. F C standing for fertile crescent okay but this area guys simply it had everything for an establishment of a civilization so it had the first the steady stream of water and because it had the steady stream of water it was pretty easy for the people to settle down and start a civilization in that place but what about other nomad people who lived in these areas Apart from the Fertile Crescent, okay, they were living in places where uh, there are no steady stream of water, there are no civilization. So, as any other civilization, those nomads started to come down here to the Fertile Crescent, okay, to descend, coming down from the hills here and the mountains, because all of this area is covered in mountains, okay. They started to descend into the Fertile Crescent and started to loot and earth to loot means to steal okay like when uh, the previous uh, president of america what's his name what's the name of the previous president of america uh donald trump when donald trump when uh, uh revolutions happened because of uh, uh, the man whose name was George, who was killed, okay, he said uh, when the looting starts, shooting starts. So looting means steal. All of these uh, people here, the nomad people, started to come to the area of the Fertile Crescent because it's rich. It's rich in mineral, rich in steady stream of water, rich in its cities, in its civilization. So they came down to the Fertile Crescent. Unfortunately, some of those uh, nomad people started to loot and to burn uh, all of the civilization. Started to steal it. Everything they found, they will just steal. On the other hand, uh, some others, they had strong armies, but they were very poor in natural resources. So once uh, they came into the fertile present, they started to settle down and to start making uh, a civilization. So simply, some of the nomad people, we will divide them into half. The first one started to loot, steal, and burn. That's a very bad thing. The second one started to do what? Started to build, started to construct, started to make a civilization. And although that uh, some of those people, the first group, uh, which started looting and started burning, uh, they started to destroy the civilization. But this civilization from here has already swept over and affected other civilization. Remember when we studied and we said that all of these people here, we call them the world cross roads because most of the people here in this place of the fertile present, they traded with other nations and with other civilization. Consequently, they affected other civilization. So although that some of the nomad people started to destroy the civilization, yet the civilization flourished and continued to exist out of the fertile crescent until other nomad people came and they settled down and started to construct their own civilization in the fertile crescent. So far, so good. Yes. All right. One of these. People were the Pipalians. The Pipalian they constructed one of the most important and fascinating civilization that arose in the Fertile Crescent. 
Of course, according to the Pythagoreans, they had the city of Babel, where was sorry the center of their civilization, and in the city of Babel, a lot of people started to rule from it, and they started to expand from it into other cities. As you remember, they were just city states. So from Babel, they started to collect other territories started to control other areas under their control and from one city we had a civilization and one of the most important rulers of that era was the Hammurabi do you remember Hammurabi yes this is Sargon. we call him Sargon the Great because King Sargon was the first man to make a civilization in Mesopotamia. He started controlling other cities and collecting other city states under his control, and he started to make his own dynasty for the first time in the fertile present. So King Sargon started to create the first known empire, which is the Akkadian Empire. And later again, we will come back to Hammurabi, and we said that Hammurabi he was best known for his code that he made. This code made it easier for him to rule his own empire and also made it easier for the people to just deal with each other. Like the codes that we are using today, the law we are making. In Hammurabi's code, it was consisting of 282 laws. 282 laws. Only 41 of them were to deal with the criminal laws, those who will just steal, those who will kill, those who will rob, etc. And the other 249 is dealing with the civil laws. So he took great interest in making the life of the civilians pretty easier and also make it a better one. Okay, but for the criminals, they were also included. And we have a stone pillar. This stone pillar, originally carved into stone steel or a pride slab, all of this pillar contained the 282 laws of Hammurabi's. And the purpose of Hammurabi code is very essential. He created these codes because he wanted to establish law for the empire. He wanted law to be made in public for all the people to understand them and also his code was uh, created uh, unity okay and uh, the Pepolian empire strengthened uh, the social uh, hierarchies in uh, his empire and also he reinforced the power of uh, the king who claimed uh, the laws uh, were handed down to him uh, by the gods if you can remember, I once told you that any king or any queen or anyone who ruled a civilization in the old history, they tried to appear to the people as the connection between the common people and the divine power. Divine power means the power of the God. Whether they were monotheistics or polytheistics, it doesn't matter. They only tried to obtain more place or a higher rank in the social pyramid by saying that they have a direct connect between the divine power and the common people. So the common people will not rebel against them. Any questions so far? No. Yes, new empires and ideas. Uh, later empires shaped the Middle East in different ways. Uh, some conquerors, such as the Hittites, brought uh, new skills to the region. Others uprooted the peoples they defeated. By forcing people to move elsewhere, these upheavals led to the spread of ideas. Uh, even as warfare disrupted lives, uh, trade continued, further helping the exchange of products and ideas. All right, the same point we have already spoken about. Okay, here we have uh, some group of uh, the Inuit people called the Hittites. They came and they settled down and they made uh, a nice civilization. 
but other groups they came to steal and uproot the people and by uprooting the countries by destroying the cities the people from the fertile crescent started to flee to other places while they are fleeing to other places even in china for example they had their culture with them so although that the cities were uprooted the culture is still spread and of course in the heat it is they were very 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 awesome blacksmith they discovered iron and they started making weapons with the iron because they found that the iron was much stronger than uh, other materials so they started manufacturing their weapons using iron then we have another group of the assyrians and the assyrian warriors built a warrior empire ah uh, so here they did not just become satisfied with the fertile crescent but they started to move everywhere started to just spread like a plague to control areas and control countries after they under their empire until they made one of the most important societies in histories which is the assyrian history and then they also took uh, people as their city main city and they started to make a new Napoleon empire okay and the new Napoleon empire spread across the whole of the fertile crescent and the ideas went beyond that very far later on we will speak also about astronomy i believe in each of the civilization we have already studied we must speak about astronomy why do you think that why in each civilization in the whole history the egyptian civilization they were very excellent in studying astronomy the indians they study astronomy the in the fertile crescent the mesopotamian civilization they also studied about astronomy in the chinese civilization they excelled also in studying astronomy why each of the civilizations we have already studied always speak about astronomy why do you think that and the because answer is astronomy ast was uh, the most important thing uh, at that time probably why is that, that? because they want to, to discover what's uh, up or what's in the space and what and do you what think about up in the space stars and planets yeah, for us nowadays, we know that there are planets, but for them, once they just look up, they know that someone was there up in that sky. Who was it? Or who was he? Someone was up in the sky? Yes, for those civilizations, they knew that uh, there was something out there in the outer space. That's why they just studied astronomy, and they needed for to study Hindus? astronomy. They connected to that person, which is the Hindu teacher. No, 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 all of the civilization, not just the, the Hindu civilization. All of the civilization. The okay. God. Exactly, Prabhu. So in each civilization, they believed that the god or the gods they worshipped were staying in the sky, right? They are living in the space or are living in. Uh, the sky so they just became very interested in studying astronomy to become more connected to the divine powers that they worship and also the bipolian people they were polytheistic and they started to just uh, study astronomy so that they become connected to the divine powers these are some of the, the iron making or iron working uh, materials and weapons uh, that the heat started to manufacture instead of using bronze because they found out that gold was much stronger than bronze and here if you can see that is the fertile crescent that is the city of people and the Babylonian empire and that the assyrian started to have all of this area under their control so they didn't just that's the fertile crescent okay they did not just become satisfied with this place, but they started to have all of this area, starting from here, Egypt, Turkey nowadays, and even went into India and beside the Fertile Crescent. All of this area was under the rule of the Assyrian. That's why we named them or we called them a warrior 
empire okay an empire that uh, was mainly out of warriors this is the assyrian empire what about the persian empire uh, this place we call it the persian gulf for a reason this place nowadays is called the, the arab gulf okay but back in the history was named the persian gulf why because this place was the, the inhabitant for the persian people and the persian now they became very irritated with the power of other nations why do we have to stay under their control under, under the control of the assyrian for example let's construct our own empire and here from uh, Persia arose the, the Persian civilization. The Persian civilization started to just uh, build walls around their cities to defend themselves first. And uh, later on, they started to spread uh, across the continent. They even went until uh, Rome and Sparta, and they were defeated, unfortunately, in Sparta. Okay, the rest of the Persian Empire. The thick walls built by Nebuchadnezzar Nasser failed to hold back the new conquerors. The new conquerors we are speaking about are the Persian one. So in the year 539 BC, we have the Italian Empire built to the Persian armies. Of Curius the Great, this man, he was named Curius or Sirius the Great because he had for the first time in history an army consisted of more than one million soldiers. Okay, that was a tremendous number back at that time, of course. The Persian eventually controlled a wide sweep of territory that stretched from Asia Minor to India, including present day Turkey, Iran, Egypt, Afghanistan, and also Pakistan. So, under the rule of Sirius. The Great, the Persian Empire, spread across many continents. It was a very great one. We have also Darius, and we have spoken a lot about Darius, that he united many people under his control as he was a just ruler. Persian economy also started to grow because of the territories that they controlled. And later on, we had the birth of a new religion, and later the Persian legacy here we can see how uh, this map analyzes the study of location of uh, the persian capitals so they started from here started to move down to the fertile crescent took control of it uh, took egypt and then started from egypt uh, until they reached most of north america uh, north africa also they uh, swept into turkey and from turkey they uh, moved into great britain nowadays just imagine how fast uh, the empire that the Persian controlled. It was a very huge one. Uh, and later we spoke also about the money economy. We had two types of money economy. Can you know it or can you remember it? Yes, I remember it. Yes, the one was called? Barter economy. Bravo, very good. The barter economy. Excellent, Abdurrahman. What is the meaning of a partial economy? To exchange two goods uh, for a good for another good without money. Excellent. Exchanging one good for another. For example, if I have egg and you have rice, I'll give you my eggs and you give me your rice. So exchanging some of the goods instead of others. And later on, we invented the money economy. So which is better, money economy or partial economy? money economy money economy is far more better than barter economy because now everything has a fixed price and now no two can just argue upon the barter economy so this is for uh, 10 reals so it will always be for 10 reals and this is for 11 reals i will not give you my product which costs or worth 10 reals and you give me yours which is 11 reals it's unjust. So you just pay me the 10 reals and I pay you the 11 reals. So we have some benefits of the money economy. Okay. Simplified exchange. 
only one party is uh, purchasing an item rather than two and also exchange values uh, comparison of items uh, being considered for purchases is simplified because all items now are given exact value which is the fixed amount of money and we have no limitations you can uh, buy whatever you want because you have the money if you have the money do whatever you want whereas the parter items such as uh, life animals may not last okay if i'm exchanging some animals so after two months after one year my animal may die so i will not hold control of it uh, forever on the other hand i will always have the money forever the phoenician contribution and we said that the phoenician we were the first one to adapt uh, the alphabet that we use nowadays from the phoenician alphabet uh, came the early greek they adapted it then uh, the early latin took it and later we the English people adapted it also. And that's it for today, grade nine. I hope that you just took some benefit out of the session. Do you have any questions so far? No, thank you. No, 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 no,